Hey, do you want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or your computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating right now. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. And when you want to take your conversation with your fans to the next level, Q&A and polls are the best way to get them talking. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. I've hosted my podcast on Spotify for Podcasters since day one, so I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started today. Analyzing what went wrong in a relationship that led to a breakup can open up a can of very intense emotions. Although for some, this can be a very beneficial step in the healing process, it is crucial to be gentle with yourself when revisiting what caused you heartbreak. During this trip down memory lane or revisiting events that recently occurred, you may find yourself creating a narrative that paints a fictitious picture of the events leading up to the breakup. Be mindful of this because it can cause more harm than good. What is going on, beautiful people? You are listening to the Affirmations for Black Girls podcast, where we focus on personal growth and cultivating a healthy relationship with ourselves. I am your host, Tyra the Creative, actress, content creator, and mental health enthusiast. Listen, Coming to terms with why the relationship ended can be a positive experience for dealing with the pain. This isn't always easy, but knowing how to use this step as an opportunity to reflect on what you learned from the relationship can help you improve for your next one. Which brings me to our affirmation of the week. This week's affirmation is, I trust that all things are working for my good. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> oh, you guys, that just hit me in a way that I didn't expect it would right now. Let's all take a moment to drop in. I trust that all things are working for my good. Mm. I trust that all things are are working for my good. I trust that all things are working for my good. I trust that all things are working for my good. I trust that all things are working for my good. Now let's say it one last time together. I trust that all things are working for my good. Oh my gosh, you guys. I just felt that on another level. I needed that right now. Today has been a day for your girl. I feel like I say that so often now, but today has been a day and this affirmation literally came at the right moment for me. And I hope it did the same for you. It, this affirmation just does it for me every time I say it. There's something so special in knowing that no matter the situation, only good will come from it. Now, I know it doesn't always feel like that at the moment, but it is a true testament of your faith, knowing that everything, everything, the positive, the negative, everything is working together for your highest good. With relationships, we tend to have 
expectations of what we want to come from it. Maybe it looks like marriage. So when things don't go according to the plan and there's a breakup, we tend to question and doubt whether good will come out of what just happened. This is where you make the decision to accept that everything will work together for your highest good. So the breakup happened. Now we will be talking about some things that may be triggering to some of you if you have just gone through a breakup, but if you feel your emotions getting high throughout this episode, pause it, take a deep belly breath and release and think about something that always brings a smile to your face. For me, that's pulling on a memory that I have of my dog, Lexi, and it could literally be any any memory and it'll make me smile. Um, But keep that in mind as you listen, guys. Now let's dive in. So we're going to be starting with why you and your ex broke up. So the breakup happened and you begin to process all of your feelings. You start to reflect on the good times, the bad times, the communication, the promises, maybe even the sex if you haven't sex out there, you know. But overall, you are probably thinking to yourself, where did we go wrong? Why aren't we together anymore? What could I have done differently? Now, I personally believe it's important to have an understanding of why the relationship ended so that you can deal with what emotions and feelings may come with moving on from that relationship. Now, here's what I mean by that. So let's take a fairly common scenario. Let's say someone cheated in the relationship. That can be you or your partner. Now, we look at this scenario from both angles because This is a judgment-free zone and, you know, things happen. So say you were the one that got cheated on and now the relationship is over. More than likely, you are left with the question of why would they do that to me? It might look like questioning your self-worth, wondering how many times did this person lie to you, comparing yourself to the individual they cheated on you with if you know who they are, And this list can literally go on and on and on. Listen, the relationship ended because that person disrespected the union you guys had. They cheated. All the questions that we ask ourselves, you know, I think as humans, we always need a reason for something and we begin to look inward. Now, sometimes that can be detrimental to us when we are asking ourselves those types of questions like, what could I have done better? What did I do? And that so forth and so on. Now, in your relationship, the person that you were with who cheated on you or if you cheated on that person, they may have had their reasons why they did it in the first place. But at the surface level, let's call a spade a spade. That was the cause. You made a decision or your ex-partner made a decision to do something that hopefully when you started the relationship, you talked about what is cheating and you set those boundaries. They did something that disrespected the union that you guys had and you have to uphold your boundaries. Even if you don't think about it on this, this type of level at the root of it all, this, this is what it is. A promise that this person made or an agreement that you guys had was broken or things outside of that agreement started to happen. Therefore, something had to give. And I think looking at relationships that ended in this way can be very beneficial to our healing process. So if I just think about my last breakup, For the longest time, I'm not even going to lie, I was like, what am I going to do? What is going on? I was scared, nervous, all of the things. Because I lived out here in Los Angeles with um, this person. We moved out here together. 
And even though, and I've talked about this in previous episodes, even though I had this thought about our relationship that it wasn't going to end in marriage, I was still heartbroken and I was still scared and I still needed to process what happened. So I would say when you are thinking about the relationship and what happened, realize that, and this is something that I just learned, realize that finding understa- finding understanding in why the breakup happened comes from you. Finding that clarity or getting that closure comes from you, not the other person. And I remember a long time ago um, after boyfriend number one, no, what boyfriend was that? (laughs) Lord Jesus. My second boyfriend, my college boyfriend and I, after we broke up, I was heartbroken because we just broke up and it just felt like the door was still open. It felt like things just fell off. It didn't feel, feel like I had closure on the relationship. And I remember it was Oh my gosh, y'all had to be, what was that? Probably like nine months after we had broken up and I was still bawling at night. I was still, you know, super upset. And I was talking to one of my line sisters and I'll never forget India saying this to me. I was talking to her and I was just saying how I'm just so upset because I don't have closure on this relationship. I don't know why we broke up. And boyfriend number two, you guys, my college boyfriend, if you didn't listen to episode one, r- quick rundown, he was, he's who I consider my first love. I thought I was going to marry this guy. I thought we were going to have a family, all of that kind of stuff. So when we broke up, my world shattered. So when I was talking to my line sister, I was just like, I, I need closure. Like, I feel like it's selfish of him not to have a conversation with me and close this chapter because all of these promises he made, all that. And what she said to me was, The way, and I don't remember the exact words, but this is what I got from it. When we are searching for closure outside of ourselves, it's like leaving your front door open and hoping that somebody else goes and closes it for you. And when she said that to me, I was sitting in my living room in my apartment in Maple Shade, New Jersey, and I looked at my front door and I said, wow. That convicted me in such a strong way and it immediately made me, it put into perspective what closure actually is. Closure comes from within. Closure is accepting the things that you cannot change and moving forward from there. Closure is acceptance and that does not have to come from outside of you. So if you are feeling like you're in a place where you don't have closure, you don't know why you broke up. You want answers. I think the the hardest step, but the first step is wrapping your mind around the idea that you may never get answers from your ex-partner. You may have to take this journey by yourself. And if you do have to take this journey by yourself, how do you feel about leaving your front door open, looking at it day and night, front door wide open, and waiting for someone who doesn't live in your house to come and close that door for you. This episode is brought to you by Been Verified. Help chip away at the uncertainty that comes with online dating and use beenverified.com, a leading platform for online background searches and people search reports. With their powerful search tools and extensive database, you could easily gather information about potential dates, which may help you find peace of mind before taking that next step. You can never be too safe when it comes to dating. Get 20% off today to help take control of your dating game. Visit beenverified.com slash podcast. If you've been listening to the pod for a while, then you know that we have spoken about boundary setting. Boundary settings is one of my new favorite pastimes. But during those conversations, I talked about how setting healthy boundaries allows for protection and respect. 
Having boundaries is imperative at every stage of a relationship, whether romantic or platonic, every relationship. But now more than ever, it's time for you to explore the idea of setting strict boundaries with your ex. You may have an idea where I'm going with this, but put the phone down, girl. Put it down. (laughs) Don't even think about sending that I miss you text. If you are serious about moving forward and this relationship is behind you, if you are serious about your healing process and healing from the heartache of the relationship that you just endured, then you have to put in the work to get through it. Now, here's what some of those boundaries with your ex can look like. No hooking up with your ex. I know and we all go through this. Um, there's been times where I call it a relapse. You know, there's just times where you just miss the person because you have been around this person for X amount of years. This is, this was your person. This is what's familiar. So you end up missing them physically and want to see them one more time and give them a kiss. You want a hug or whatever the case may be, set a boundary. Will hooking up with your ex, kissing your ex, hugging your ex, will that help you heal? What is the end goal with that? Another boundary could be demanding space to heal and taking time for yourself. So not being close in proximity with this person. And I know that isn't always the easiest thing, depending on your situation. But think about what you need in these moments? What will help you heal in the most healthy of ways? Another boundary may be not engaging with one another on social media. That may look like blocking them completely, having zero contact with them. And another one could be have a plan on how to co-parent and sticking to it if you have kids. Maybe you have a buffer person, like a, a family member, who will help you hand off the kids to to one another at the beginning of, or you know, the first days, weeks, months after the breakup happens. Because I would say, in my opinion, the first month of a breakup is imperative to how your healing process would go. And this is, I'm just speaking from personal experience, y'all, because in my last relationship, we broke up God knows how many times. And I started to notice a pattern. I noticed a pattern that when we would break up, it wouldn't feel real for one, because it was a constant thing. And it was no more than three days. He would text me. I miss you. Let's talk. Let's work it out. Or I would do the same. I miss you. Let's talk, work it out. And we would do that. Now, the last time that we broke up, I took a trip. I wanted to do a solo trip to San Diego. I blocked him on my messages. I blocked him. Y'all, I blocked all social media. and He's still blocked to this day. Not because I'm upset with him, but because being in contact doesn't serve me right now. Maybe down the line when I am fully removed from the situation and, you know, it's not still fresh in, you know, years because we were together five years. We've only been broken up for, I don't even know, a year and a half, something like that. Um, maybe he'll be unblocked, but I knew in my heart of hearts that if I really wanted this relationship to be over, I had to set hard boundaries. And in the past, I used to be a little guilty about setting those, those hardcore boundaries because I didn't want him to feel like I hated him because I don't hate him. I just, I felt guilty that I was taking away the ability to reach me and I didn't want him to feel like I hated him. I didn't want him to feel, you know, bad, but we got to let all that go. It is all about your healing process. Now, I think one more thing that I personally would add to the list that, um, (laughs) y'all, I went through this. I would say another boundary after a fresh breakup would be 
to make sure that I do not rebound because one, it does, it doesn't serve me. And two, all it does is prolong my grief. And we talked about this in the episode before, but it just compounds my grief for me. I realized that bouncing around from dude to dude and not taking time to fully flush out the relationship that had just ended, it just made me angry, upset, sad, and it just took me longer than I would have liked to grieve my relationship. And I know this because when I was using guys as rebounds, going on dates and all of that, I was distracting myself. I wasn't spending time with Tyra and that was the issue. And I think that is what, I think that's the definition of a rebound. If you are rebounding, hitting the backboard and bouncing to another person without taking a second to center yourself and check in with yourself and take inventory of how you're feeling, that is a rebound. If you're distracting yourself and self-medicating with other people, using other people to help ease your pain, that's a rebound. Now, what can your boundaries look like after your relationship ends? I want you guys to take a second to really think about that and make a list because the first About 10 times that me and my ex broke up, I didn't have those boundaries. And the one time that I did finally say, okay, this is what I need to move on. And I wasn't calling them boundaries at the time. I wasn't. But when I said, okay, this is what I need to do. This is how I need it to look. That is when I was actually able to start healing and start moving forward. Now he was mad that he was blocked and he would email but I wouldn't respond. And it was one of the hardest things that I have ever done because I was breaking old habits. So what can your boundaries look like with your with your ex? That may look like zero contact. That may look like blocking them on all social media. Or if you do have kids, it may look like set in certain days and times where you are open to communicating with that person. And it depends on your situation. Now, When I did the trip to San Diego after my ex and I broke up, he was blocked on everything. I was sad. I was in, y'all, I was in my hotel room crying, okay? But I still felt an underlying sense of peace when I was on this trip. And he ended up, I forgot, I think he emailed me again or something like that. And he was like, I miss you so much um, and all the things. And At that time, I had already set a boundary with him saying, I can't talk to you for 30 days. Now, this trip was at the probably about day 20 to 24, somewhere up in there. And he messaged me and I politely messaged him back because I wanted him to know that I had a boundary. So I, and I could have said this a little, a little differently, but this is what I said. Cause I'm going to be real raw and regular with you guys, because this ain't a cakewalk and I'm not here to pretend that it is boundary setting is hard. Breakups are hard. They can be so many things. So I, I see you and I, I feel you and I'm rocking with y'all. I said to him, well, he said, I miss you. Don't remember the whole message. I said, I miss you too, but we're not supposed to be talking for 30 days and I left it at that and he said okay and that was a very empowering moment for me because that's the first time that I ever stood up to him in a sense of I stood up to him and I reinforced my boundary and I did it confidently and quickly So if you are in a situation where your boundaries are constantly being tested, I think finding a way to confidently and quickly reinforce them with your ex will train them, or I don't know if train is the right word. That sounds like I'm talking to a dog, but it will help them realize that you are serious about this. Now, y'all, I cannot express to you enough how important this step is in your healing process when I started setting these hard boundaries. It was just like weights were lifted off my shoulders and I just felt so much. I felt I was proud. I was so proud of myself for doing that. I want 
to see you get through this and feel like yourself again, feel like you're blossoming, feel like you're growing into who you should be, growing into the healthiest version of yourself, positioning yourself as a healthy person to be in relationship with another romantic partner somewhere down the future, down the line in the future. And you're going to have to protect your heart, not put up walls. I'm not saying that, but protect your heart and your health and demand the respect that you very much deserve by setting those boundaries. So I have a question. How could you have been a better partner in the relationship? Now, before you answer, I really want you guys to think about it and be honest with yourself. Try not to go off solely what the other person wished you did more of, but also look at what you personally feel like you could have improved on that your partner may not have mentioned. Now, I'm asking you this because the overall goal or what I see as the goal with relationships, especially if they end and you move on to new ones, is to always evolve and grow into the best version of yourself. Now, now that you've come to terms with why the breakup happened and you've set your boundaries, you have to go through the process of forgiving yourself. Now, there may be things in the relationship that you could have done better, and that's okay. I think there's there's always something that could be done better, but everything happens for a reason and it happened just as it should. Amen. So, Don't go running back to the relationship thinking because you discovered these new things out that now will work out. That's why this step comes after you accept that the breakup has happened. So after my last relationship ended, I truly took time to reflect on the relationship because I knew that our relationship was not great. I knew that there was some mean things that I did in the relationship. I knew that there were some things that I did wrong and that's how I felt in the relationship. I felt like, okay, Tyra, you shouldn't have did that. But I never said anything about it because I had a a big ego. I didn't want to be wrong. I didn't want to show weakness. I had a lot of things going on in that relationship, you guys. And I had to forgive myself. I had to say to myself, Tyra, you did your best. Girl, all of those mistakes that you're talking about, that you're thinking about, they were all lessons. And I used to feel so guilty. I used to feel so much regret about my last relationship because I I would say things like, I wasted so much time. Tyra, how could you do that? What were you thinking? Why didn't you just leave two years ago? And What I realized is that I was beating myself up about the relationship and I had to take a second to learn how to forgive myself. So through therapy and through reflection and dating again and now being in a new relationship, it opened my eyes to some things that I could have done better. And I learned, I learned a lot, y'all. I learned a lot. Listen, this, this is affirmation for black girls and we keep it real, raw, and regular. Um, so I'm going to just tell you guys a couple of things that I could have done better or that, and not even could have done better, but things that I am going to do better in the future. Things that I have learned to do differently in the future in future relationships. And I think the the very first thing is to watch my tone because y'all, I could come at you crazy. And I, I, I told my, my current boyfriend this, I was like, I used to talk crazy to my ex and y'all, when I say crazy, crazy, and it would be at times where I felt hurt and I didn't know how to express that. So in the future, and now I'm cognizant of that, and I really take a second to think about what I'm going to say and how, how I say it before it actually comes out of my mouth, because 
I know my goal. My goal is to speak to my partner in a loving way. And I've seen that I haven't done that in the past. And that is something that I am working towards in the future. Another thing that I learned about myself in my last relationship is that I desire to feel heard and be heard and be seen. And in my past relationships, when I didn't feel heard and I didn't feel seen, I would act out. I would do very petty things. Uh, I remember one time um, during COVID, my uh, well, boyfriend at the time was at my house and he had an Instagram live. He told me about this Instagram live, but he told me that it would only be about 15 minutes long. And um, I had a lot of stuff that I had going on. So I was like, okay, well, I really need to film. I needed to film a video. And in my last apartment, I didn't have a lot of natural light. So we were racing against the clock. Now, he said, okay, cool. I know you got to do your stuff. Let me just do this. Okay. So he's on the live. I'm cleaning up the kitchen, getting my stuff ready because I was filming a, a cooking video. We creep up on 15 minutes. They still going strong. We creep up on 20 minutes. Still going strong. We creep up on 35. I'm looking at him behind the camera like, hey, I have stuff to do. Like wrap it up. But you told me 15 minutes. He ended up being on the call for an hour. The sun starts to set. I'm pissed. I am clanking dishes. I'm making noise. All of this stuff while he's on an important Instagram live. But at this point, I didn't care because I felt disrespected. I felt like I was not heard and not seen. And we was in my space first and foremost. Okay. But I could have handled that differently. And in the future, I strive to handle that differently because one thing that I do not want to do, and I didn't want to do it at that time either. I was just so upset. I don't want to jeopardize my partner's growth. And I do feel bad about that situation. And I think about it from time to time and I'm like, dang, like I really wish I wouldn't have done that. But also that wasn't the first time that this had happened. Keep in mind when I'm talking about my situations, um, we were together for five years, so or four years. I don't know, somewhere up in there, y'all. So this stuff was compounding. This stuff was, you know, building up. And the last thing, or one of the, the last thing I'm gonna tell you guys about today, the last thing that I learned about myself that I could have done better in my last relationship is be more affectionate and more giving with my words. In my current relationship, I made a point to be more affectionate. I made a point to be softer. I made a point to always tell my boyfriend that he is handsome, that he is smart, that he is so creative. I made a point to do these things because I didn't do that in my previous relationship and I also knew that that was my partner at the time's love language. Now, for some reason, it wasn't clicking in my head that this is what I should have done. But as I started to reflect, I really started to say, dang, I didn't even mean it like that. And this is why hindsight is always 2020, y'all. But this is why even now I'm like, okay, I want to make sure that I am the best version of myself and that I am aware of things because I don't ever want my partner to feel unloved. Even in my last relationship, I never wanted him to feel unloved. That was not the goal. I just did not know how to take what I was dealing with, take my emotions and have a conversation with him about how we can move forward in a healthy way. That was not something that we knew how to do together based on our circumstances. So those are a few things that I learned. And I learned these things through journaling. So if you have a journal, sit down and think about some scenarios that happened in your relationship and what you could have done differently. But remember that everything happens for a reason and you have to forgive yourself for what happened. And forgiving yourself for what you may have contributed to the relationship ending will help you to be better equipped to take care of yourself through this healing journey. It's okay to feel guilty if you were 
quote unquote, the cause of the breakup, or if you think you were the cause, the goal is not to sit in that emotion too long to where it becomes crippling to your mental health. And we have to limit the negative inner self-talk, the little voices that tell you that it's your fault or you wasted time and all of that. Yeah. Tell her to shut up. Okay. But seriously, you guys take the time to acknowledge where your growth and opportunity happens and acknowledge your shortcomings and prepare yourself to work on them and become a better version of yourself while also forgiving yourself for the mistakes that you've made in the past. Breakups can be complex and very draining. It's important to remember that everything happens for a reason and all things are working together for your good, even if it feels ghetto out here. Take time to find joy in navigating life after a hard breakup. The key to a healthy healing process is taking time to be present with you. Get to know who you are again, reflect on your experiences and set healthy boundaries with the person who is no longer in your life in the capacity that they once were. The biggest takeaway I have for you is that closure comes from within. So are you going to wait around for someone to close your front door or are you going to take matters into your own hands? Uh Uh-oh, y'all, you know what time it is. It is time for our fun closing segment. Now, I thought it would be perfect to bring back our breakup cards. So if you are not a part of the subscriber community, we did a ton of these cards in the community and we just sat and reflected on our past relationships and it was a whole vibe, you guys. So please join the subscriber community. We have bonus episodes that you don't hear on these regular episodes. It's only $4.99 a month, $4.99 a month. And you get additional newsletters as well. And before I even jump into this, since I got y'all attention, the subscriber community on, on Anchor, they are doing a lot to make it better. It's still very new, so it's very hard for me to communicate with you guys. I know you may be wondering like, okay, Tyra, like what? What's the deal? What's the deal? But it's very hard to communicate because it is a very primitive system right now, but I wanna let you guys know that I'm working very hard to figure out what I can do on my end to make it easier for you to access the bonus episodes and all of the bonus content that I do have for you. Now, Go join the subscriber community, $4.99, and it's like a digital hug from me. The link is down below in the show notes of this episode. So today we're going to do three um, questions. So I have them here. Oh, this is, what's going on? Okay. So this game is called We're Not Real Really Strangers, and I have the breakup edition. So feel free to grab a notebook if you have just recently gone through a breakup or you've ever gone through a breakup and you want to write these questions down to journal about them later. That's 100% what I do. And like I said earlier, when I was journaling, I learned so much about what I could have done better in my previous relationship or, you know, things that I'm going to do better in the future based on my actions in my last relationship. So get a notebook and let's jump in. Okay. First question. Oh, God. Oh, wow. We hitting the ground running. What parts of yourself do you need to break up with? Oh, God. They coming for my neck already. Okay. What parts of yourself do you need to break up with? I think One part of myself that I am working very hard to break up with is the belief that I am not good enough. And I was just, you know, struggling with this before I was recording this episode, you guys, because I'm going to be honest, this episode, this series is a little triggering for me because I just recently went through a breakup. It's only been a year and some change. So from time to time, feelings do arise and I just, I was reflecting on my entire dating life and for some reason I was feeling like I've just never been 
good enough in the past. And first of all, I rebuke that belief right now. And sometimes it just gets the best of me. But I think that's the biggest thing that I like to break up with the idea that I'm not good enough. The idea that I'm not enough because I am a whole person. I am enough. I was just not in the perfect situation for me or even for the other person in those relationships. And yeah, that's what I need to break up with. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, this next one is a reminder. So it says, reminder, breakups skew your memory. Your ex was not perfect. You will feel better. I love that. Write that down on your mirror. If you just went through a breakup and you've been feeling like this, write it down. Your ex was not perfect and you will feel better. Put it on your mirror. Put it in your journal. Make a voice note and play it over and over again. Do whatever you need to do, but you will feel better. Okay. Oh, Lord. Imagine you're talking to your ex. Okay. Finish the sentence. I'm sorry for, oh, oh, y'all, this is triggering me because I used to have a big ego. I didn't want to apologize. I didn't, mm -mm. oh gosh, this is, this is, this is one. Okay. Imagine you're talking to your ex, finish the sentence. I'm sorry for blank. Mm. I would say, I'm sorry for my lack of patience with you. I am sorry for the way I treated you in certain situations when I didn't know how to respond to your vulnerability. I am sorry for not honoring your love language, even when you expressed to me the way you wanted to be loved. That's what I would say. Last question. Did their love leave you feeling good most of the time? If not, what was the dominant feeling they left you with? Oh, wow. Um, I got to think about this one. Did their love leave you feeling good? most of the time if not what was the dominant feeling they left you with I think towards the end of the relationship I almost never felt good and that was after I found out that he was cheating with a, a mutual friend but I think the dominant feeling I was left with was not embarrassment. What am I trying to say? Um, he just, I just, I just felt very self-conscious about my femininity. Um, before we broke up, we had a conversation and he said that I was very masculine. And at the time I, I view it differently now, but at the time I took that as I'm manly and I'm not feminine enough. I'm not soft enough. And that made me self-conscious about who I was because in, re in reality, I love being feminine. I want to be soft. I am in my soft girl era. And I think the part that was missing was, and I wish I would have had the words to say this at the time, because maybe we could have had a different conversation. Who knows? But everything happens for a reason. I would have said that the reason that I am appearing more masculine is because I do not feel safe to be feminine in this current situation because I'm a very soft person. And that was something that, y'all, I thought about that all the time. I was like, why? Because I, I agree to a certain extent with what he was saying. I would always say, why am I so tough? Why? I feel like I, this is exact the exact words that I would say it's like to my friends. I feel like I'm the man in the relationship. I feel like I wear the pants in the relationship. And not to say that he's, you know, too feminine or he acts like a girl. That's not what I'm saying. But I felt like I was the dominant one. And it was interesting for me because that was not my role in previous relationships. 
well, in my previous relationship to that one with co- my college boyfriend, I was very feminine, very soft. I was definitely what I would consider an alpha woman, but second in command, you know, um, high school boyfriend, that don't count. We, we kids, but I would say that I was more masculine and I wore the pants in that relationship as well. Um, I think given the circumstances, I can play either side, but where I like to live is in my femininity. I like to be soft. I like to be vulnerable. I like, I, I like to be the nurturer. I like to be soft. And that's something that I, me and my boyfriend now, we talk about all the time because I can be so soft with him and I just feel so safe to be a woman. And I have not felt like that ever. Honestly, I haven't felt safe like I do now ever. And yeah, so that's how I was left feeling. I was left feeling very uncomfortable with how I presented my energy in the relationship. So, oh, those were some good questions. Oh my gosh. Y'all write them down, journal them. If you want to share your answers, send me an email. I would love to hear it. Oh my gosh. Email me at affirmationsforblackgirls at gmail.com. But that is all that we have for you today. I'm so glad that you guys listened to the episode. I know it could be tough for so many of us out there. It could be triggering, but thank you so much for rocking with me for this time. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure that you rate the podcast and make sure that you review. We have a 4.9 rating, you guys, and we are listened to in over 100. We are listened to in 107 countries. I'm super excited. My Spotify rap just came out. You guys are showing up and showing out. Thank you so much for all of the love and all of the support for Affirmations for Black Girls. Leave me a review. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Just, I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening. And I cannot wait to be back again next week for the third segment of our Healing from Past Romantic Relationships series. Thank you all so much for listening. This was Affirmations for Black Girls. Um, have you joined the community? If you do not know what I'm referring to, the Affirmation for Black Girls podcast now offers exclusive content in addition to weekly episodes. Think of this subscription as a digital hug for me whenever you may need it. Your subscription will include ad-free listening, praise the Lord, bonus real chats, and let me tell y'all, I am keeping it real, raw, and regular, okay? You will also have access to the Affirmations for Black Girls newsletter, where you will stay up to date with all things Affirmations for Black Girls, which will include upcoming events, things that have been on my heart to share with you, and additional resources to aid you in becoming the best version of yourself. You will also get unlimited additional affirmations, discounts on all products and merch created for Affirmations for Black Girls, and even the chance to be featured on a future episode of the podcast, which is the part I am most excited about. For the very low price of $4.99 a month, you will get access to everything I just shared and the perks are continuously growing. To subscribe, click the link in the show notes or go to anchor.fm forward slash affirmations for black girls forward slash subscribe. I think it's easier to just click the link. I hope to see y'all in the community.